Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. So it's uh, t the two days before Thanksgiving. Well, I'm pretty much about to go on my paternity leave and give the helm to Brady and Christina. But I really wanted to show you guys what we've been doing, what Bio Dude's been up to. So I'm gonna do a full warehouse tour today, including my manufacturing, my greenhouse. It's gonna be an awesome video. So you guys know you can come visit my storefront. This side is my employee entrance. The storefront's here, Monday through Friday, nine to four, Saturday, 10 to two. You're always gonna see Patty and Lucy out here, always, you know, watching the door. Not only is this building protected by the Second Amendment, it's also protected by my fur babies. We also got, um, we have uh, the building sanitized by the germ guy. Uh, we, do, we get it done every 90 days, as recommended by the CDC for businesses. And he comes in here and he coats every surface with a special antimicrobial thing. This, this uh, completely gets rid of, they say, everything pr helps protect against the coronavirus. As you guys know, we are in Harris County, Texas, in, in Houston. So if you guys know anything about that, it's, it's just getting out of control down here. So we're hanging on as long as we can while main strength maintaining all recommendations from the CDC. Anyway, so we got some plants. So some of the changes, you know, you're going to see, you guys have seen small previews, you know, in some of my videos. So we have everything barcoded now with a price. Plants are a lot more organized and we have a lot, we have a lot of, a, good, a pretty good selection right now. We don't have any trees at the moment, which is a little, kind of tough to get right now because, you know, Corona and stuff getting shut down. You know, we got the whole wide array of feeders from bean beetles, wax worms to different types of roaches. You know, fruit fly cultures. I got all the good gut loading stuff down here. Um, my bee I'm waiting on the bee pollen to get here. So that's the only thing that's not here. But we got a bunch of different types of isopods. And we also have a lot of new ones in the works. So I'm really excited to, you know, to bring those out as well as some of those blue Padura springtails that Chase at Houston Frogs and Tommy at TC Insects have both been working with. So it's pretty cool stuff, guys. I'll, I'll, sh I'll show that to you in a bit. So we got powder blue isopods. We got powder whites. We got dwarf purple, we got dwarf whites, and we got, you know, you know, your arid and your tropical springtails, as well as these neat little land shrimp critters uh, that I got from Tommy at TC Insects. But one of the most exciting things as you guys can see down here is we started selling some live animals. And this was, this was a big leap for me because I wasn't gonna do it unless I could do it right. So at the end of the day, um, I finally decided to invest in some of these, these exoterra terraplexes, which are great. Um, and we know we started bringing in some, some common stuff, but also stuff you don't see every day from vendors that we have relationships with that we can trust, captive bred, or some of the animals here we're producing here in-house at the BioDude. My goal one day for BioDude 4.0 is that I have a 3,000 square foot space that is just dedicated to breeding our stock that we have here to, at the store. Very rarely do we get anything ever wild caught, but if it is wild caught, it's not only kept here for a quarantine process for a month, we worm it and make sure it has a great weight and is eating what we want it to eat before it's even available to the consumer. And our blueies are a perfect thing for that. So some of the critters that we got, uh, we got a beautiful Lichianus in here. Uh, we got some uh, captive bred dart frogs. These are your green and black eroticas. One of my favorites that we got in is we got a we got this beautiful captive bred grandis, actually produced by Audrey here, uh, and this is a female, and we've actually had her here for I think about a I don't know about two weeks, give or take, maybe a little longer, but they usually don't usually don't last too long. We got some captive bred red eye tree frogs produced by yours truly. Um, you know, which makes it, which makes them, you know, even more special to me. And I, I, I sell them, I, I sell my red eyes capped to bread here at $25. Um, you know, so that way I can ensure that people are getting an, a, a lot of times trying to get a group because they just, they do better in groups. You get a lot more better behaviors. Uh, you know, of course we got some captive bread Borneo tree frogs. Some of them are produced by me. Um, some of the other ones were produced by the frog lady, which I highly recommend guys. She is an awesome tree frog breeder. She has great, great animals. Uh, we got, you know, we got some leopard geckos, some fat tail geckos, you know, captive bred emerald tree skinks and oscillated skinks, but I love my snakes. So I, we've been getting in a good amount of snakes. 
Uh, we got corn snakes and the albino Nelsons. Uh, so unfortunately, not a ton of the snakes are out, but these, uh, these corn snakes here were produced by a very close friend of mine. mine. His name's Michael. And he produces some of the best animals that I ever have the, have the privilege of offering to the public. So as you can see here, these corns are doing great. So when, the, so when you come in here and buy a snake from us, not only are you getting a complete detailed care sheet, you get the entire feeding schedule. So everything we do here is electronic. So when this snake eats, we document it. When it sheds, we document it. When it poops, we document it. And then when you take that snake home, it allows us to show you the more of the individualized care. Now, when you're dealing with, you know, when there's a large amount of snakes in here, we classify the group. And then if there's one not meeting expectations, then we separate that one out and get it to that expectation. So we got a, uh, we got an apricot Puebloan milk snake in here, a mosaic king snake. We also have some adult leopard geckos, tangerine Honduran milks, uh, cal, uh, 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 normal cal, uh, Cali King, Kenyan Samboa, white-sided black rat snake, Chinese cave geckos. I can just keep going. We got a bunch of cool stuff. Let me see if I can find. Yeah, check it out. So I really like these guys because they 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 are a little finicky in the aspect of like they don't really like to be messed with. But I just wanted to show you guys because I knew I could find them. Now these are they're great pets, guys. They're easy to take care of. Uh, you know, they are, uh, you know, they like to be out when the sun's going up, when it's going down. So, you know, and, you know, we, we have a, we try to have as much of variety. We have some, you know, some starter little amphibians like Pac-Man frogs, tomato frogs. Uh, and we know we got some really beautiful blueies here that are eating some of the bluey buffet. You know, beardies and a bunch of other little cool critters. So some things you can just start out with, other things that you know, and you need a little bit more experience. So then over here, you know, we got a bunch of stuff. We have mister, misting, misting systems, foggers, you know, all your, your Pangea foods, uh, you know, the, the, the Rapashi line with what I have now, but I, I plan on bringing in all the Rapashi, all of it. Um, and we move on down here which I'm very happy sure about. I'm sure you guys noticed my shirt. So we actually started We actually started getting in a lot more swag. We got hats. We got these really awesome green tie dyes, which I'm very partial to. Yeah. Um, it's just, again, it's just another thing that my staff has helped me figure out that's allowed me to really focus on growing the back end of stuff. Uh, down here, we have a lot of, you know, your different filters. You know, we have some really cool mosses. So we actually get this from, uh, from North Texas and we use this in a bunch of my vivs. You can see some of the uh, videos that I posted recently, like the Bluey video, I use some of this. You know, we have a lot, of, a lot of your different accents over here. We got the chameleon pouches and then we got heat and UVB. I'm bringing in the entire Fluval line for turtles, so their canister filter should be here next week, which I'm super excited for because Fluval is an awesome brand. Um, and we also have, you know, your other types of filtration like sponge filters for caudates uh, or for terrariums, pumps, tubing, all of that stuff to create your paludarium. You know, and you guys, you guys, I'm sure you recognize my uh, glow, glow and grows and solar grows here. You know, those are my staples. Nothing too crazy, you know, you guys know all my substrates and woods. Um, I was particularly fond of this, um, this piece. It looks like a 357. So we have, we permanently affixed it up there. And I have Christina making a sign that says our wood prices will blow you away. <laughs> so we got, you know, we got ghost wood, grape wood, burl tunnels, choya, mopani, a bunch of stuff. And, uh, some of the stuff goes by pound, like the cork. And now I get my pork straight from, cor from Portugal um, sometimes. Sometimes I run out of that container so fast, and then it's tough to find. But we've been doing pretty good. We've been doing pretty good. We have a lot of, like, your different manzanita stuff, branches, and longer choya, nut pods. Um, I'm pretty satisfied. I was able to get in these Zoomed bonsai trees. Now, I don't have these online yet because I'm really reluctant to ship them because... Zoomed packages them in a single wall box. So it's not a shipping box, so you have to repackage it and hope, put that box in another box and hope that the crush rating is good enough because these are delicate, but 
beautiful. I've been uh, bringing in a lot more of the Arcadia uh, products. As, as much as I can find, I get it. Um, that stuff has been very, very hard to find, but we have some new, so there's some cool projects coming in the works here uh, in the future for, you know, for, for, you know, opportunities. This is a paludarium that I built. I actually just did this yesterday for some cinnamon tree frogs for captive bred ones that we have here. It's 100% aquatic base, glow and grows on the top. We can see we also have some, uh, some small teas available. We have some orange baboons, some Brazilian back, black, some pumpkin patches, and some Tilly's pink toes. And you know, every animal, we have a little bit of a tidbit about it. We always have a raffle, always. So there's always gonna be a tank here that you can win at the end of each month that's fully set up with springtails, isopods, your bio shot, sometimes darkling beetles, uh, super worms, whatever we can put in there to help with your bioactivity. And all you got to do is you leave us a review on Google and purchase uh, or purchase. And we do it at the end of each month. So just another reason to come to the bio dude. And then out here is the showroom. Uh, you guys have seen a lot of this. Uh, this is Audrey, uh, our curator of fauna. You guys have seen her in some of the, the, uh, the update videos. Audrey, tell us a brief snippet about yourself. How long have you worked here? So I've been here since June. Uh, started here, came from the exotic veterinary medicine side. I uh, have a degree from a and in wildlife and fishery science. And I'm also a big time hobbyist as well. Um, a lot of times if you've got dart frogs from here, they came from my house. I mainly breed those dudes. And also uh, some Felsuma species as well. Yep. So couldn't ask for a better job. I think I have about the best job you could get taking care of all the critters here so. it's it's fun and it's, it's really nice because like a lot of my staffers here we try to have as many opportunities for growth as possible so up here is that is my blue tongue enclosure that i did a couple couple about a month ago and he is doing lieutenant dan is his name as chosen by everybody he is doing wonderful now my ackies guys they've been breeding like crazy so both of my girls Hey, big man. They have been they have been under the substrate for a while. Um, I'm very very certain that they've been laying. So I'm kind of waiting for the day for baby Aki's monitors to just show up in here. But this big boy, he he is not not you know in short supply of being entertained. That's the best way I can put it. Um, the UVB in here is strong. The the the, the plants that I put in here they completely destroyed. Um, which is expected. So what we're trying to do is find like thick, thick cacti or succulents that can handle the abuse that these monitors put through. But everything in here is thriving. It's one of my favorite enclosures here at the Bio Dude. Um, sometimes I come out here and I just kind of just watch them because they're so inquisitive. You know, we can feed them from our hand. It's just, it's awesome. I got my dumpies in here. Uh, Smithers is actually at another location, which I'll show you. Uh, you know, my, my Amazons, you guys remember that tank? Here is my Borneo eared frog enclosure. And you can actually see these guys. Uh, this is a 70-30, 30% 30, 30 water, 70% substrate, uh, fully bioactive. And of course has the water feature in here with a, with a big, big philodendron. But these guys have been breeding like crazy um, with their foam nests. And there was some residuals on the leaves, but it's been you know, this, this plan is just getting huge. We're gonna have to cut it back soon, but the frogs love it. I mean, you can actually see some of them up here. Uh, now, I wish these guys were out. Um, these, these are my banded gally wasps. So I actually have a good group of these guys that I purchased from Sean Harrington at the Frog Whisperer. They're probably one of my favorite critters here, but like you, when you come up, come up to them, you kind of gotta be like, like they don't, they don't mess around. They love hanging up in the trees. So when they're babies, they get this, be this beautiful zebra coloring. And then they, their color somewhat changes, uh, you know, with having orange bellies and things like that. But they're still an awesome, awesome species to keep. Uh, we, this is my, one of my, this is my scorpion enclosure for my giant desert hairy. And you can see how majority of the substrate's completely disheveled and things like that. She just constantly shifts this substrate around to her liking um, all the time. You can see at one point that the, the, the head, that was completely covered in substrate, but sometimes she covers it up, creates different types of burrows or whatever. My cinnamon tree frog enclosure is here. I actually touched base on this enclosure. 
that video over there, or of that video, that tank over there. You guys remember the Chinese, the Chinese gliders, they're doing great. So before Audrey, unfortunately, we lost one of them, unfortunately, um, which was very upsetting. Uh, so we did make an attempt at breeding them this year, but um, we weren't successful. So I'm definitely working on it, um, but it is something I hope to achieve. We do have the emerald uh, tree skink. This is my first group in here. Now, the girls have been kind of quiet here the last couple months, and that's okay. You can see how the substrate's gone. So I do have a very thin layer of, of my super grow down here, and then this is just a deep layer of firma. You can see the trees are thriving. We have a, a really old ficus tree in here. We have a large cephalera. We have some sanservias, uh, some aglonemas. All of them are thriving, but you guys know who I'm super partial to my Cubans. So I don't, I hope you guys remember this build. This build was a really long time ago. And I think this is the only one that the one Miss King system didn't accidentally flood at one point. Come here. So Cubans are known for being notoriously mean and unable to be held. I've had these guys for since couple, couple weeks, about two weeks out of the egg. I would like to call them rescues. Um, it's a Noleum and a Noleum Steel are their names. Um, and I had to do a lot of work to get them healthy, but they've been breeding. They have been producing captive bred Cubans for me for a couple years now. Um, but this relationship that I have with this critter is absolutely amazing because this isn't something that you get from Cuban night and oles. Um, it just goes to show you that reptiles have a different type of intelligence that they're not given credit for. Uh, which again, such an amazing critter, critters to keep. Okay, so in here is Fred. I'm not sure where Hims is. He is a bearded anole, and he's been a long time resident here. Where is he at? Oh, yeah, there he is. He's just up there chilling on his log. I'm gonna leave him be though. He does not. He does not have the relationship that I have with the Cubans. He's not like, being messed with. But so, some of the staffers here definitely like him, like Tiffany. Um, Tiffany, Amber, Rebecca, these guys are a big part of my customer service as well as Tiffany has a little bit more of a special role here. Tiffany, tell us a little bit more about what you do. Um, I have recently been promoted to inventory manager. So I'm working in the background to make sure that we keep stock up for you guys. And I'm doing my best to make yep. sure we keep everything in stock. Yep. So like you're going to see an order fulfillment, we are, everything's getting bar, everything's been barcoded and we're getting everything transferred and barcoded. A lot of you know Amber. Yeah, smiling. yeah, she's, she's smiling. 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 Rebecca, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm new to the company. I gotta go this Thank way. You. Sorry. I've been here for a couple months. Um, I cannot express my gratitude for this company. This company is literally the best company. We the products, the people, everything about it. I really appreciate it. Awesome. So what I'm really excited to show you guys is my order fulfillment. You guys know I've been sometimes I've expressed my frustrations via various platforms as far as challenges that I, that, I, that I deal with. Shipping and having to rely on a corporation to have a portion of your success be viable is extremely frustrating. So I take very extensive steps to do that. So for the first thing I want to go over is my shipping and the aspect of what precautions does BioDo take with everything. So, as you guys know, I manufacture pretty much all my boxes. All of my boxes, with the exception of the 1899s, they are double wall. Not only are they double wall, they have the highest crush rating that you can possibly get. So they can handle being kicked around all the time. I manufacture many different sizes. Um, sometimes if we have pending orders or orders that we're waiting for customers to get back to us on, we might sit them here uh, uh, to get them done. The tape that I use is 100% branded, and it is the strongest gum tape that you can manufacture. I do not use clear tape. 
I do not waste my time. I do not waste your time. Every BioDude box will be thoroughly protected the best that we possibly can with this tape. I'm so proud of that. Oh, it's good stuff. So something that we've been working so hard to do is to try to get shipping down. But shipping prices keep going up. Like it keeps going up and up and up. But as a business, we're expected to have our prices keep going down. So logistically, like how do you figure that out, guys? It's hard. Manufacturing your own boxes, that's a big plus for me. Having my own taping manufacturer, that's a big plus for me. But another big way is how we use and recycle materials in our packaging. So this machine, this is all 100% recycled. What this machine does is it creates a special bubble wrap that we use to, to ship our tanks to you via FedEx ground. From there, we uh, also have these other packaging machines here. So you can see this one right here. Jeff, how's it going, man? Uh, guys, this is uh, 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 this is Jeff. He's been here at, at the uh, at the Bio Dude for a while. Uh, Jeff, tell uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, I'm Jeffrey. What I do, I ship the material. When the material comes to the line, I go through. All I make sure all items are available. Here's the we, literature, more literature. It's enough literature, so. All the literature, for everything, as always. For, for the bio shot, for each substrate, we put it. We put it in each box, and we seal it up. And we, and we get everything. We even got discounts, scan codes. For I dig your it. Hard work and your dedication to us, to the company, and we use the tape. Watch it. I love this machine. The amount of time it saves. Oh. Nice. Print out the label. So right now we're using ShipStation, which again, is, is, it isn't bad. And I, I'm sharing this with you guys willingly. I'm, I'm good. This is, this is all, you know, I love showing people the, the grind we go through every day to do what we do. Yeah, we every day. We it on the box right here. Yep. We ship it out. Come and there goes our label. So that's how they go out the door. So as far as the packaging, this what we do is we use this machine and it turns this box into this, which this is what we use as stuffing. This is how we wrap some LEDs. Sometimes this is how we wrap plants. We also have this fancy machine that creates 100, takes 100% 100 recycled cardboard rolls and creates this padding here. Again, to go with our 100% recycled boxes. That also has me saying, well, how do we make sure your order is right? And that's something that I, I am so proud of, not only myself, but of my team to help us figure that out. As you see, guys, every single thing here is barcoded. Every single thing that we pick has an item location, a barcode. And let me show you guys the big brains who figured out how to implement this because this, is, this isn't something that I could figure out myself. I relied on my staff to help me implement it. I heavily relied on my property manager, Brittany. Brittany, please tell me a little bit about yourself. Fill us in, you know, and, and what we're gonna talk about Hey guys, sorry about that. We had a little bit of audio trouble, so we want you to understand the system fully. So let's get into it again. This is an order. Obviously, it's one to us. There's a barcode up here. And this is our SKU Lab system. So to fill any order, all we do is turn this on, scan this, and the order will pop up for us right here. Order pops up, and this is the order. That way we're not picking the wrong items, pulling the wrong orders, and then the name will be at the bottom, our customer, so we know we're filling the right one up. So all we have to do is start picking. Tells me what I need. I need a BioShot 18 quart. It says it on here as well. All I have to do, scan the BioShot 18 quart, item cleared. Pick it. 
put it in the box or staple it on the invoice. All right, the next item I need, according to my invoice, I need a Firma 36 quart. All I gotta do is scan my Firma, item cleared, grab it, put it in my box. And then the last one I need is a bug grub one pound. Now, you can either scan it from here and it clears, but we also have the barcode on the on the package as well. So once an or once we have picked everything correctly, it'll take us to this, tell us we're cleared, how long it took us to pick the order and how much time has elapsed, everything else. Put it in here. We can go to the next order, shipped order, if I wanted to ship it. Or I can go back. Make sure everything is filled out. We have a note section, so if y'all want to leave a note for us, if you want a certain size wood, we'll try our best to get it. Fill it out here. All the information is down here. And we even have an activity that will tell us, oh, look who filled it. To make us more efficient and hold ourselves accountable to make sure we do our best to get your orders out correctly and efficiently. And then after that, we put it on the line and ship it out. Okay guys, so really brief you, this is a part of my manufacturing, it's busy. Um, so as you can see, I got my giant mixers going. These guys, they're going all day, all day, every day. And I need to double down on space. As you can see, we got, we got some emptying up here. As you can see, it's dusty. So we have, to, we have to have special masks for operating the mixers. We have to have hard hats on. Like there's a lot of PPE that I have to follow. Um, you know, you guys can see we're getting some product over here set in stone. So we're really, this is the next area that I really have to work out for efficiency because it's growing like crazy. Okay guys, so this is my greenhouse. Uh, this gets emptied out like every three weeks. Um, it's crazy. So there's a lot that goes into this area. We have to disinfect the bins for cross-contamination. You know how we have to ship according to USDA, how we have our different floral certificates here because we're in Texas. Like there's so much to it. And there's also a lot of work that goes into taking care of the plants, getting new plants propagated, stuff like that. I would like you guys to meet AJ. And AJ is, AJ, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Oh, uh, I'm AJ and I help take care of the plants until they reach the good homes that are your terrariums. Yep. No, uh, let's see, uh, my degree in college was landscape architecture, but I, I ended up working in nurseries, and then eventually a boss man here decided to, uh, put my expertise to work for him. How long ago was that? Uh, ooh, three or four years, yeah. I think. Yeah. I got a lot of staff that's been sticking around. That's what we do, but let me show you guys a, a, a little bit about down here. You're the man. Keep at it. So... We got some be we got a bunch of beautiful plants. Let me tell you guys, Corona has made getting plants so flipping hard. Okay, what I should say is it's made it hard to get clean plants. Clean plants. But we got some cool stuff in. You can see everything here is labeled. And so we have to bleach out each tub after it's done being used to prevent cross-contamination. Hey guys, I mean it's no joke. Here's bins of terrace ferns. Uh, we got bins of lemon button ferns. We got, uh, these, this is just the fern section here. Uh, we got partially my favorites, bird's nests. And AJ is keeping them exactly how they need to be. And then you see some of the different smaller plants that we include in some of the arid bioactive kits. We got a bunch of different aloes and haworthias and different types of succulents, you know, and they're all the ones that we have are animal safe. Like we don't have any of like the, the ones that are gonna, you know, poison them or anything like that. And you can find some really beautiful ones in here. What else we got? So we got a little bit of a recovery section, but we also got some of these beautiful these these beautiful brahms so if you buy a mother brahm brahm plant for me this is what it looks like usually um sometimes you know i get as many different varieties as i can but the minimum per case is 25 and it's more along the lines of a space thing 
you can see I got these, I got this variety here. I got this, this variety right here. Like this, this is a beautiful mother plant, look at that. So again, just more stuff here available at the BioDude. Uh, we got a bunch of, uh, we got more ferns down here. We actually just got a plant shipment in today. Uh, we have a good amount of the elephant feed. Yeah. Uh, you can see AJ's getting the getting all the all the bins lined out, and then Christina's gonna come around here. Doing great. All right, so. Again, we got some of the really nice elephant feeds and the larger chrysulas here. We got some neat peperomias and some prayer plants. Um, let me show you guys these prayer plants. Marathas, beautiful. We got some beautiful, uh, more peperomias, some petonias. Got more desert stuff over here. I also got some larger ferns. I have a couple upcoming builds that I'm really excited for. Oh, and we got we got some emerald gems, and some and uh, some more beautiful arrowheads. You guys know arrowhead vines. I got a bunch of different colors and types. These these are my favorite. These grow in so much. The ag the whoo it is raining. These are your emerald gems, and we keep a good amount of water here at the base. And then we also have a good, some, some pofos. We don't have near as many as the variety that I wanted to have, but that's okay. Um, we normally have trees, and we don't have any trees right now. And then we have some large, large Sanservia, some large Shuffleras, you know, and some, and, and some other cool looking, uh, cool looking stuff here. So this is a greenhouse. Oh, Riley, say hi. She, Riley's actually my niece, and she works in uh, customer, in, uh, customer care. She's, she's here full time. So I guess let's go check out the rest of the building. All right, guys, so in here is our biodegradable room. So this is where we actually sort, package, and prepare a lot of our biodegradables. I have a separate facility where all the excess is stored. Um, and what, essentially what we do, we get the appropriate tubs in here. Um, and then we go ahead and we go through the bins here. One bin has like magnolia. Uh, one bin has some large oak. And one bin has small oak. And then we sort it pick out the stuff that is not okay, that can't be in there, um, and then making sure that all of it is acceptable and ready to go. Um, I would like you guys to meet one of the people that's responsible for that. This is Mark. Mark has been here for a, go a good amount of time. Mark, briefly tell us about yourself. Uh, I've been in the reptile business for more or less 15 years, and so I, that's how I kind of got into this business myself, you see. So I can kind of help reptile keepers go into the right direction, and part of that is make sure they have the right biodegradables for their biodegradable setup, their bioactive setup. Sorry for my mask, you keep slipping off. <laughs> so, the leaves are probably the most involved of all the biodegradables, in my personal opinion. Yep. Just because we do get them from outdoors. And as you can see. Yeah, we gotta make sure that there's no pine or, or anything like that. We have people bring us bags of leaves and we have, before we can even accept it, like we have to go through and people bring us these bags and they bring me stuff like this. And I'm like, I can't okay, take occasionally this. Occasionally we get special prizes I'm Like, inside. you know, you, so this isn't something I can use. All right, so as you guys can see, I got some uh, cork bark here and we also keep some of our triple A stag and the ingredients in here. You know, we try to do our best, guys. It's hard to sort by our grables. It's hard to make sure that, you know, you're always have good stuff. And that's that's been a challenge. Leaf litter is a challenging thing to get enough of it and then to make sure you have enough while providing a quality, quality product. So this is the break room, which I am particularly fond of. Um, I, it was very important to me to provide my staff with a really good space um, here. So the only part of business that's in here is part of this wall. So I keep a lot of my extra marketing materials in here. Um, some of my overflow hideout or guide outs. You know, you guys know, you know, the dudes guides, you know, all that good stuff. Um, I have all of my labor law posters and stuff. Um, the 375 days without an accident. Um, you know, staff notifications are up here. Uh, and I always got to have motivation. Yes, it's me. So you all know I'm a huge Office fan, so Michael Scott's everywhere. Um, and this poster has been with BioDude since inception. And it's not going to go anywhere. It's like the original dude poster. Um, and then these guys are in here for a reason. This is my other group of my emerald tree skinks. Um, I've had this group for a really, really, really long time. This tank is there. This, they've been breeding. 
The tank is flourishing. This is just firma, no drainage layer at all. And look at how well everything's growing. Um, and these guys are in here because they love attention. I know, I'm not Tiffany. You, you know me. Come here. So this is actually one of the, I think that's, yep, yeah, this, is, this is one of the male, the only male. Um, and then we have a female right up here. Oh, I just scared her a little bit and they're going to meet up. But this group has been producing for me for years. We actually have one of their offspring for sale right now here at the Bayou Duke Houston. Um, as far as cleanup crew, we have a bunch of it in here, um, as well as your different types of beetles and all that good stuff. So love this group. So lucky to have them. Uh, and then I'm going to go down here. So, you know, pretty straightforward. Uh, oh, hey, dude. Hey, Pad. So this is him's feeding station throughout the day. Him being a giant breed and still a puppy, he needs to eat all the time. So keeping this one away from that has been a challenge. So in here is just storage. Um, nothing too crazy. This is just where, you know, I keep things for special projects. So I'm going to show you guys in a minute. I have a special custom built en enclosure for Smithers coming from Zach. And I have this piece just waiting for it. I got this in my last cork bark container from Portugal, which let me tell you, we got 25 pallets in. All of us were completely sold out in a week. Uh, no, not a week, about two weeks. It's crazy. In here, this is the project room. So we are still, this is still a work in progress. As you guys see, I'm out of space already. Like what I'm doing for next year is just, hope I execute because I'll be ready to keep moving. We've got some master springtail cultures here. Uh, we keep some of our overflow isopods in here. And I got some other species that, you know, I didn't have. Got some Montenegros. Uh, we got some Oreo, Oreo crumbles, which are really neat looking. We got the Encores. Okay, and the Encore, that's just a mixture of a different colors of Persiniuses. Nothing too particular. Oh, here's a, check this out. We got some dairy cows. Guys, yeah, we, we always have this stuff. And you say, bye, dude, why don't you ship? Maybe next year, I'll be shipping these year round. Maybe. It's just, it's really hard, guys, and it's really expensive to do it right. And most people on a non-hobby scale aren't willing to pay that price. And there's a lot of money you have to put into it. So, you know, it, it, has, it has its pros and cons. Here is some of our tadpole rearing and froglet rearing area. So in here we have some Borneo ear tadpoles, which are getting big. All right. We have some red-eye tree frog tadpoles down here, as well as some, uh, some baby red eyes in here. Captive bred Borneos in here, and you guys know Mr. Smithers. Now, Mr. Smithers, his tank is thriving, but he did not, long term, those tall exoterras, they don't have the ventilation in the middle enough. And I had issues with him getting very minor upper respiratory infection, got two of them. And I said, no more. So I pulled him out of that current setup. I'm eventually gonna demo it. Um, and he's just been staying in here until he can give me like six months of no issues. Um, I mean, his humidity and his, his, his temps were perfect. You know, there's no reason for it. So um, it's something that we are just making sure that he's okay. But we plan on putting him back into the bio in his enclosure um, with a Mrs. Smithers, hopefully, in 2021. So I'm really, I love you, Smithers. Yes, oh, Smithers. Oh, oh. I was smiling, if you can't tell. He has such a great feeding response, too. I love it. I know, dude. I know. If you guys don't know, he is a bread live python from Australia. He's one of my favorites here. Close to the heart. Here are those blue Padura springtails. Telling you guys about. Very, very tiny. Pretty cool. 
and that's on clay. Something new that's coming up is a chase at Houston Frogs and Tommy at TC Insects. From my understanding, they're both doing it. A lot of people are moving towards clay. I personally really like the charcoal. Um, I think it really functions well. Oh, we have Christina's office in here. Let me have you guys say hello <laughs> to Christina. Hi guys, how's it going? Uh, I am one of the managers here. I do marketing and human resources for Josh. I've been here a little over a year and I think that my favorite part about working here is learning something new every day. It's always, great. It's always <laughs> new challenges. I love it. Go back to filming. Hold yep. on. Cool. So I want to show them the fat tails. So we put this 75 together for a breeding group of fat tails. So we have them cooling down right now. So they're not out, but I got, oh, we got a tail. So one of the girls is her Oreo tail. She's hanging out down there. Um, but we are, we're putting them through a cool, a cool phase to hopefully let them uh, breed here uh, when we warm them back up in a, in, a, in, a, in a couple months. So, and then I actually have, have my own office but the first thing i want to show you guys is the employee entrance is right here so when employees come in they come in through here here's our tank storage but this is what they have to look at every day first i'm all i'm all about motivation so we have these these are my monopoly signs i got from iconic highly recommend them um, leadership this is for christina Brittany, and myself to see every day and it's a true definition of what a leader is, and so is this. Rent due, success is never owned, only rented. Rent is due every day. Success, price of entry, it's all true. Um, and I like to bring that mentality to my staff every day. Trust me, I am, I am a tenacious, tenacious mofo. I got my, I got my sign that Tiffany got me. It, it, it fits, fits my personality. Um, so my office is just stuff that I love to try to make me, um, you know, happy. So this is my, my wife and I are huge Renaissance people. Like we love going to Renaissance festivals, like what we do. And this is a sword that I uh, recently got and it, it's the most badass thing ever. I mean, it's so sharp and it's just, yeah, I dig it. Um, but you know, um, as you guys know, I'm a big Rockets fan, season ticket holder, love Fallout, and I have my scotch and a lot of my stuff here. My red eyes in here. This group I've had, this is this group I've had for an extremely long time. Um, one of the males I actually purchased um, for my wife when we first started dating, and that was nine or ten years ago, maybe. Um, and then I think I originally got the group in '06, maybe. I can never remember. I have all life stages in here. Um, you can see we got some tadpoles in here. Uh, we have some old eggs that were laid on top of that brom. And I did a highlight video on this enclosure not too long ago. Um, and of course, I do have my little goat guns here. We have an AK-47 and a Thompson submachine gun. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, guys, and uh, last thing, last little section here. I know this is a long video, but I just really wanted to show y'all. You guys, you guys met Brittany. This is her Hi, office. You know, she's just she's getting her work done. Last but not least is the storage. It's again, it's just more storage. Nothing too crazy here. Um, big things happening for BioDo 2021. I can promise you. I have a lot of good ideas and a lot of plans to expand out of this building. Um, and this is where we keep a lot of our. Uh, you know, overflow, wood, ghost wood, Malaysian driftwood, Mopani, uh, you know, manzanita, all that good stuff. And uh, I think that's, I want to say that's pretty much it. Yeah, we got the tanks. Pretty common. He's laying here blocking the entrance. And uh, I really appreciate everybody's support. Um, I'm really, I'm really happy and blessed to be where I'm at. And uh, I really hope if you guys come to the store, that you guys just enjoy yourselves, get to look at the critters. And I'm really so proud of all of my staff. And, you know, there were some big hurdles and problems that I had to solve. Like for our shipping, you know, you guys see it, we launched our flat rate shipping. You spend $15, your, your shipping is only $100. Uh, you spend $100, your shipping's 15. That is permanent. So now I offer flat rate shipping with the route with the route insurance to make sure that they get stolen, misdelivered, 
uh, damaged, that it's covered no matter what. And that to me is like, that's, it's a scary platform because it's, there's a lot that can go wrong, but if you execute, a lot of great things can happen. A lot of other opportunities can be made available to you. And I just really appreciate everyone's support. And I'm gonna be gone for a couple months or month and a half or so, but when I come back in late uh, first quarter 2021, it's gonna be great due to vibes.